Benjamin Studios Publishing presents an unabridged recording of The Surprise Attack of Jabba the Puppet, an Origami Yoda book by Tom Engelberger, read for you by Stuart Heyman, as all the characters. We're really ready by Tommy. Me and Kellen knew we were starting a new case file when Dwight got back. I mean, we didn't just didn't know what it would be about. I mean, you never, never know what to expect from Dwight. He and his origami Yoda used the Force to help out a bunch of us at school. Or did he really? But then he and origami Yoda were beaten by Darth Paper and Harvey. Or were they really? Then he went away to this weird brainwashy school and left an origami Chewbacca to help us. Or did he really? Then he turned in normal and gave up origami Yoda. Or did he really? Well, actually, yes. He really did. But we're able to save him and convince him to come back to our school after his suspension was over. It's all those reallys that make me write these case files. Because, like I said, you never know what Dwight is going to do. And lots of times, even when he's doing it, you still know you still don't know what he's really doing. So that's why I was ready to start this case file the minute Dwight walked back through the doors of Macquarie Middle School. I couldn't wait to find out what he was really going to do this time. The Return of the Dwight by Tommy Today was January 6th, the first day of the spring semester. We found out that there are going to be a lot of weird changes at the school. Judging by how excited Principal Roski was, was about them, they could not possibly be good. And judging by the posters that were going around the school, get ready for a fun time with fun time, they're probably really, really bad. So everybody was wanting, was waiting for a special assembly that was going to happen right after her homeroom, when Robski was finally tell us what this fun time thing was all about. First, we figured there would be the return of the Dwight. He was kicked out of the fall semester. This was the start of the spring semester, and he had said he was coming back. So, would he have Origami Yoda with him? Or was he going to have to wait a few days for that? Would he be happy to see us? Would he, be, would he say, hey everybody, thanks for saving me from the brainwashing? Or would he just say, purple, and not look at anybody? Just like he does sometimes. Whatever he did, I, I was ready to write about it in his case file. And Kellen was ready to doodle about it. And, of course, Harvey was ready to complain about it. When I got to school and Sarah told me that Dwight was, was on the bus with her this morning, I was a little worried that he had changed his mind about coming back or that his mother had changed it for him. And, but then Mike came running into the library and to say that he saw Dwight and his mom going to the office. That made sense. There's probably some kind of paperwork she has to fill out. Maybe she, maybe he needed to be re-enrolled for the spring semester or something. And I'm sure Principal Roski wanted a chance to warn him about not disrupting the learning environment. Well, I asked Mike, did you talk to him? Did he talk to you? No, I didn't have a chance. They were right outside the office. His mom was down on his knees looking right in his face. She said, are you sure you want to do this, honey? And he nodded his head, and she was hugging him and stuff. So I just kept walking. But guess what he was wearing? What? His old biggie sizer combo for just 39 cents shirt. That was a good sign, I think. And his cape. That didn't seem like a good sign. The First Person to Talk to Dwight by Jen Tommy... I'm actually sitting down to write you an email instead of just a text this time. Because, of course, I feel terrible about Dwight getting kicked out of school. Because a lot of it was my fault for letting Harvey talk me into telling him on Dwight. <coughs> but you know all about that. Anyway, I've been practicing an apology and was waiting for a good chance to talk to him. Then all of a sudden, there he was. I'm in Miss Bauer's homeroom. You know, we were on our way to the cafeteria for the assembly about all the way of the new fun time fun time classes, which by the way are going to which by the way are going to suck. We passed the office and Dwight just popped out and started walking along with us, right next to me. 
First thing I noticed, of course, was that he was wearing his cape again, but I wasn't about to mention it. Oh, Dwight, I'm so glad you're back, I told him. I'm so sorry for having I but he cut me off. You know how Dwight is always woo woo wooing? You know, spacey and mouthy and stuff? Well, he's a total op he's totally the opposite of that. Thanks, Dan. It wasn't your fault anyway, he said. But we got no time for that all that now. We must use the information in this assembly to plan our attack. I kind of panicked when he said attack. Was he starting to s say s scary stuff again? I have forgotten was sometimes I was afraid of him. Was I going to have to tell him again on his first day? Uh, Dwight. Did you really mean to say attack? Attack what? You're not going to attack Harvey or something, are you? No, we need Harvey on our side. You too, Jen. We'll need everybody. Everybody? But why are you going to, uh, attack? Fun time. It must be destroyed, he said, starting to straight ahead. I only hope that's when Erupsi's speech speeches as an island. A weakness can be found. It's not over yet. Shh. Shush just met out with power. You should be walking, not talking. And then we were at the assembly, and that was it. I, I will just point out that Dwight listened to absolutely every word Dropsky said and didn't even fidget much much while she was talking. Harvey's comment. Well, even if I had to admit that I'm glad she's back, he's back. The rest of you guys are so boring, so welcome back, Dwight. But the cape? Not so much. He wore that for most of fifth grade. I hope he's not going to tell us to call him Captain Dwight again. My comment. If the cape is helping him stay focused on destroying fun time, then I'm all for it. Because fun time is... Is... Well... Let's, I'll just let Robski explain it in her own words. Robski's speech at the assembly by Miss Lugene Robski, as recorded by Kellen's recorder thingy. I am holding out my hand. When the hand goes up, your mouths go shut. Your eyes are up front. You guys need to know that by now. Harvey, Harvey, it is time to stop talking. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, okay, now where is it? Okay. I recently had the toughest moment in my entire career as an educator. I had to take down the banner in our lobby that says Macquarie students have passed our state standards tests. For eight years in a row, Macquarie Middle School's students have met the minimum standards on the state tests. Last year, we did not meet that minimum standards. Test scores at Macquarie were the lowest in the county, and I had to take that banner down. Now, I know that you kids are the best students in this county, right? Right? So, we are going to prove it. We are going to join together and get those scores up. We are going to pass those minimum standards requirements this year and put that banner back up where it belongs. But it's going to take a lot of hard work and, yes, some sacrifices. And some of you may know there will be no electives this semester. I was always proud of what you did in your elective classes. Your artwork, your band and chorales concerts, your model rockets, pizza bagels, and stamp leather keychains, and we all hope that many of these activities can continue after school, on Wednesdays, on Wednesdays, and alternate Thursdays, and I know that you'll be all as sorry as I am that we'll not be able to take our trip, Springfield trip to Washington, D.C. this year, but I am holding up my hand, I am holding up my hand, you should not be talking, thank you. I know you're all disappointed, as I said, I am too, but we are hoping if progress is being made to have a half-day mini-trip for each grade, possibly to Green Hill Plantation. My hand is up, your mouth should be shut. If your attitude about Green Hill Plantation is that bad, you can stand in ISS while the rest of your friends go. Okay, uh, but... We cannot allow all these things to take too much time away from our core curriculum. Math, science, language, arts, history. There are some subjects at the heart of your school. And on our state standards tests, they are the fundamental building blocks of your education. We need to focus on the fundamentals if we are, want to improve our scores and get that banner back up. 
So, the Lucas County Board of Education had parented with EduFund Educational Products to do just that. We will begin their using their new, highly effective educational system called Time to Focus on the Fundamentals, or Fun Time for short. Instead of going to your elective classes each day, you will be assigned to a new classroom where you'll use the Fun Time system to prepare for your upcoming state standards of learning tests. The Fun Time Menace by Tommy None of that was a real surprise. Last semester, Cassie and Sarah had figured out that the chorus teacher was leaving and there wouldn't be any more chorus classes. Then Kellen found out about the same thing about art class. Then Rotsky sent a letter to all our parents telling them that elective classes were out and that tech press classes were in. And there had been rumors that the field trip was getting canceled. But the threat of making us go to Green Hill Foundation again was new, and particularly finish. We got dragged there so many times in elementary school, and once you've seen it, you've seen it. It's just an old house with ropes across the doors and all the rooms so you can only peek in. And when do you peek in? We, old junk. We have all spent a lot of time complaining about not getting to take our electives. I have signed up for Lego Robots with Mr. Randall and Sarah, but none of us realized just how bad things were going to be. Well, I guess Dwight did. Dwight knew. Or maybe it was Origami Yoda who knew. Either way, it was bad. When Robski was done, we were told to go to our second period class, which normally would have been one of our electives. For reassignment to a new classroom. I don't know about you, but the word reassignment makes me think of something Empress Robsky, oops, I mean Emperor Palpatine would do to a prisoner. So I went to Mrs. Randall's room and Sarah was there. So we were so we were Lance and Quavando. We wouldn't have a we would have a great Lego robot team. But Mr. Randall told us to not to sit down. I wish you guys could stay, but I have a whole room full of sixth graders coming in here. Well, where are we supposed to go? asked Sarah. Well, said Mr. Landel, let me just have a look at the world's more worst design chart here. He started flipping through a packet of papers. Sarah, it looks like you'll be going to Mr. Stevens's room. Quivando, you'll be also going to Stevens. Lance and Tommy, you'll be going to Howl. Ha! Huh? said Hanlance. Said Lance, go to Howl. That sounds about right. It did sound right. In just one morning, I had gone from Legos with Sarah to fun time with Mr. Howell. There was some good news, though. When I got to Mr. Howell's room, Kellen was already there. Some lady I'd never seen before was in the art room, and she told us to come here. Plus, a bunch of 8th graders were going into the art room, which is, by the way, doesn't have all, all, the, all my any art stuff in it at all. I wanted to know where my clay, chiba, my clay java sculpture from last semester is. Then came Mike and Cassie. We were all grumpy about various things, but I was trying to look on the bright side. Maybe it wasn't going to be too bad. A bunch of my best friends were here now. Maybe it would be a little bit of fun, trademark. And then, a shadow fell across the room. A figure loomed in the doorway. A being of infinite malice and darkness stood there. A disturbance in the force. Howl, whispered Callan. It was Mr. Howell, our sixth grade homeroom teacher, known for his evil deeds and hatred of all students, but especially me and Kellen. I don't like it any better than you do, Kellen, said Mr. Howell. I had more than enough of your bad attitude last year, and I had a bad feeling that your bad attitude is just going to be better when you see this video. Howell pointed a remote at, the, at a cart with a DVD player and a TV. He pushed a button. Laser beams shot out of the TV and it blew up our brains. No, not really. What happened was worse. The TV came on and the DVD started. And fun time began. Imagine, if you will, another world, another galaxy, where there is someone like Mr. Good Clean Fun, the guy with the monkey puppet who comes to our assembly and, sing, and, and sings songs about how to blow your nose. But this other galaxy dude is actually worse. He lip syncs all his songs and is named Professor Fun Time. 
and instead of a puppet, he has an animated singing calculator. And together, they sang. Fun time! Every minute, every second will help you focus on the fundamentals. The weird dude said, I'm Professor Fun Time! And the calculator said, and I'm Gizmo! We're here to help you prep for your big test! What does prep stand for, Professor? Preparation and review period! Wouldn't that be PARP? asked Kellen. Please, Kellen, this is painful enough already, said Mr. Howell. Said Mr. Howell. So then, the professor and Gizmo did a math problem, a really easy one, like we learned three or four years ago in math class. Then they sang about it. Then they did it again. The exact same problem with the exact same numbers and everything. Then they sang again. Okay, okay, with the teacher, now press pause and hand out the worksheets, said Professor Funtime. And he and Gizmo sat there blinking for a while until Mr. Howell woke up from a semi-stupor, found the remote, and paused the right in mid-blink. Then Howell gave each of us a worksheet. At the top it said, Funtime, trademark, 7th grade math standards 101. At the bottom, it said, copyright edgy fun educational products. The first thing on the worksheet was the exact same problem that the professor had done on the video. Then there was nine more very similar problems. It took about 20 seconds to do the whole thing. Like I said, we were all learned how to do these things a long time ago. Then... When we were all done, Mr. Howell hit the play button and Gizmo went over the answers. Very, very slowly. And showed us how to do each one. Very, very slowly. And then he sang. Kellen whispered, thank Jar Jar, it's almost over. But then Professor Funtime said, Great job, everybody! See? With a little prep, you can go a long way. We'll see you tomorrow for more fun time. Tomorrow? I asked, as I begin to, to begin to glimpse the dark truth. Oh, yes, said Mr. Howell. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Every day until the test. When's that? Sometime in May, so only about four and a half months, Kellen stood up and shouted, No! Save Us, Origami Yoda, by Tommy. By the time we all met up in the cafeteria for lunch, we were all thinking the same thing. How is Origami Yoda going to get us out of this? So far, Origami Yoda has gotten us out, out of all kinds of bad stuff and to all kinds of good stuff, so it was just natural to ask Dwight and to ask Origami Yoda what to do. Clearly, Dwight was ready for this. He hadn't even gotten lunch. I repeat, Dwight Tharp, who actually likes our school lunch, who actually loves our school lunch, was intentionally skipping it on his first day back. He was just sitting there at the table when Origami Yoda, waiting for us. Hey, Dwight, what are we going to patience? said Origami Yoda. Wait for everyone, we must. Okay, but do you know what to do, right? Yes, said Origami Yoda. No, I do. Yes. Dwight has a bunch of different Yoda voices. None of them sound much like Yoda, but you can often tell what the sort of mood Origami Yoda is in. There's sort of the screeching normal voice, our dreamy future telling voice, and then there's the scary time to get out the lightsaber voice. That's the one Origami Yoda is using now. Sarah, Rondell, and Amy came and sat at their end of the table. Origami Yoda told them to wait too. Then Lent Mike, Lance, and Covando came, and finally, Harvey. We were waiting on Harvey, complains Kellen. Why? Origami Yoda cut him off. Now see you the perils of the fun time menace. Yes, said Harvey. It's like being in the Sarlacc pit for, and being slowly digested for a thousand years. Gross, said Rondella. But accurate, said Sarah. Well, said Lance, 
Can you do something about it? Can you stop it? Orgamiota shook his tiny paper head back and forth. Do that? I cannot, he said. But you're Yoda. You can do anything, said Mike. Mmm, said Origami Yoda. No, remember my failure in the Senate chamber. All powerful I am not. Too strong as I many he is for one Jedi. So why are we sitting here listening to you then, asked Harvey. Because the time has come to use what you have learned. Fooled or more origami, you must. Join with Captain Dwight, you must. Captain Dwight? Bray Harvey. Yes, join him, you must. Only together can we withstand this enemy. An origami alliance you need. Jeez, are we going to talk about... Are you talking about an origami club or something? I said Bondella. I pass. No, more than a club you need. More is required of you than that. It is time for faithfulness, solidarity, courage, all the qualities of a Jedi. But for what? Kellen and I asked at the same time. Origami Yoda looked at each of us, then at Dwight. For a second, I thought about how crazy it was, all of us sitting there staring at a finger puppet, and then the finger puppet staring back at us and watching while the finger puppet looked at the guy who owns the finger. But, er, but something else told me it wasn't crazy. When Origami Yoda looked at me with his crinky eyes, I knew what he was going to say, and I knew I was going to agree. Come the time has, Origami Yoda said slowly, for rebellion. Snort, snorted Harvey. Harvey's comment. Captain Dwight? Captain we just had to rescue the guy from a school because the kids were being so nice to him. And now all of a sudden he's Captain Dwight again? My comment. It is pretty weird. He's not acting like a superhero this time. More like Captain Rex. All business. Captain Dwight is almost the opposite of the special Dwight we had to rescue. He's not in, deter he's not in dreamland. He doesn't start babbling about the history of giant yo-yos or whatever. He's actually focused. Of course, he's still got a talking finger puppet, so is no one going to mistake him for normal. The Paper Rebellion by Mike, the Holocron Keeper. Captain Dwight said, Who wants to be the Holocron Keeper? And I thought that'd be awesome, because the real-life Holocron Keeper and this cool dude who works for Lucasfilm, and who knows everything about Star Wars. But then Dwight handed me a spiral notebook. He had used an eraser to write, and write in scratch slash scratch holocron in white letters on the red counter. Uh, this is the holocron? I said. No, empty notebook it is, said Origami Yoda. To record everything and make it a holocron, your mission is. Wait a minute, said Tommy. Isn't that what I do? Do or do not. There is no try, said Origami Yoda. Uh, that doesn't answer my question, said Tommy. Ahem, if you don't mind, we have a lot to get done, said Dwight. Now, who has joined the rebellion? Raise your hands. Please write down the names of the members of the, Hol of, of the Rebel Alliance, Holocron Keeper. So I did. Dwight, Tommy, Kellen, Lance, Amy, Lance, Sarah, Covando. Har Harvey and Mandela did not raise their hands. I'm not raising my hand until I know what we're doing, said Harvey. We are forming an origami rebel alliance, said Dwight. We are breaking free from the Edufun Empire. We will demand that we get our classes back, get to go on a field trip, and not have to watch those dumb videos anymore, or fill out those worksheets. I may be wrong, but this seems like, like the first time I ever heard Dwight make sense. I mean, it was just a long sentence with words, and now not just, and not just purple and a bunch of weirdness. However, it didn't seem to make actual sense as far as being something we could actually do, though. How can we demand anything, said Harvey. Remember, I went to a school board meeting last year, and they complained about the no video games in the library rule, and I couldn't even get them to listen to me, much less do what I asked. Yes, I remember that, said Dwight. That was a bold action, but you stood alone. We will stand together. Stand together and do what? asked Amy. Fail, croaked Oregon Miyota. That's what I'm saying, said Harvey. No. Failure, a path to victory can be. 
Here we go with the jibber jabber, said Harvey. Next thing you know, Sarah is going to get out her fortune cookie wookie. Whoa, said Sarah, holding her tape holding up her taped up Chewbacca on Han Voldo. That means shut up, Harvey, said Han Voldo. And it also means Dwight, if you understand what Origami Yoda is saying, let's hear it, kid. Okay, but remember, it's a Captain Dwight, said Dwight. The problem is that the average test scores of the, for the whole school are too low, right? And Robski brought in fun time to make the scores go up. Well, why don't we make them go down? How? Fail the tests you must, said said Origami Yoda. The standards test? You mean fail on, that's, uh, fail on purpose? Purpose on, said Yoda. I, so, I see what he's saying, said Amy. Let's say you, instead you got an 80 on the test, it said you get a zero. That brings down to the school average. How much? asked Sarah. Just a tiny bit, said Amy. Yes, a tiny bit by one student. A huge bit, if by many. Huge bit, said Harvey. Isn't that in... Shh, hissed Kellen. I totally see what he's saying. If we all agree to do this, then we could prevent Von Time from working. Hmm. How many of us will have to do it? asked Sarah. Not sure am I, said Yoda. Look to Amy for Jedi math skills we will. What? I'm not that good at math, said Amy. That good you are, said Origami Yoda. Also, R2-D2 will help you. Dwight pulled out this big brown envelope that he reached out and got out a pack of fancy origami paper. He took out a sheet that had, that had sil silver foil on one side and handed it to Amy. You'll find the instructions in the case file Kellen and I made, said Dwight. Then he pulled out a sheet of gold foil and gave it to Lance. What's this for? C-3PO. No way, I want to make Boba Fett. Yes, but C-3PO and R2-D2 get to hang out together a lot, said Amy, giving Lance a big smile. He smiled and took the paper and took the paper, and the rest of us all barfed. Then Dwight gave us... Then Dwight pulled out a brown sheet and gave it to me. Here, Mike, Mace Windu protects the Holocron Keeper, he said. And here's some paper for his lightsaber. Purple for his lightsaber. Sweet, I said. Mace Windu equals awesome. Why, Mike? Shouldn't I be Mace, shouldn't I be Mace Windu? Asked Kellen. Yeah, and shouldn't I be the Holocron Keeper? Said Tommy. No, I said. I'm Mace Windu and the Holocron Keeper. Worry not, Kellen. Luke Skywalker, you will make. Origami Yoda told him. Oh, okay, well, I can't say no to Luke, said Kellen. He's mega stooky. What about me? Asked Tommy. Stop interrupting, you must, said Origami Yoda. Sora and Sarah, you can keep Chewie and Han, said Dwight. And Mandela, you can be Ahsoka. Here's some paper for you. The paper was kind of was some kind of orange on one side and white with blue stripes on the other. I guess that was meant to make her head tentacle things or whatever those are. Rondella just looked at it and said, Uh, what, uh? Ahsoka, said Lance. You know Anakin's Padawan from the Clone Wars? She's massively bolt. Uh, said Rondella. No, thanks. I didn't realize we were going to sit around here playing paper dolls. I think we'll go see. I think I'll go see how Jen is doing. We need to talk about your your book stuff away anyway. And she got up and left. If I join, and it's still an if, said Harvey. I get to be Anakin. Of course, said Dwight, handing him a sheet that was black and white. No thanks, dude, said Harvey. I'm prepared. He held up his old dark paper and flipped the helmet sh back to show the face underneath. Captain Dwight, meet Anakin Skyfolder. Nice folding, said Dwight. So are you joining? This battle is inevitable, said Anakin. Yes, but are you joining, said Sarah. Yeah, well, probably, but you guys haven't asked the mo most important, qu important question yet. What are we doing when Robski finds out? Oh, find out she must, said Origami Yoda. Only she, if, if she knows, we can win. Huh, said Harvey. Aha, said Amy. I get it. It's not really about failing the test. It's about saying we will fail the tests. It's about, well, hopefully, she, if we fail the tests, she, hopefully she will be so scared about saying we'll fail the tests that she will fix things and will, and then we will actually not have to do it. You think she'll be scared by us? Said Covando. More like the other way around. 
I didn't mean she would actually be frightened, said Amy, but I think if we get enough rebels to show her some numbers, then we, she'll, she'll have to do something. Yeehaw, math power! You show her, kid, said Han Foldo. Uh-huh, said Raquan, because I Covando. I'm still trying to figure out what, who is going to march, go up, to go to march up to Ms. Robsky to show her all this. That job will go to our leader, said Dwight. Holding, handing time, Tommy a sheet of paper that was brown on one side and white on the other. Foldy Juan Kenobi. Harvey's comment. I'm still not clear. Is Tommy our leader or is it Foldy One? Either way, I need to borrow Lance and C-3PO to say, We're doomed! My comment. Thanks for the support, Padawan. You do realize that you're a Padawan, right, Padawan? Actually, I'm a little uncomfortable about being Obi Wan. I thought I was gonna write a case there about this rebellion, not being in front of, not front of the lightsaber around, and I'm and I sure don't want to be the one to face Miss Robsky. She is going to explode. Sarah's comment. I'm not sure if either of you noticed, but Rondella didn't come back. Kellen's comment. I noticed.